wanted to stay in Glasgow and we fought for her and we we won. Um, so that's the Glasgow girl story. Um, but our campaign kind of continues, um, really. And um, for me, education has been a very powerful <coughs> tool that I have used. And because of the education I have received from Drum Chapel High School, and then I went on to university, um, it's been a privilege, really. And uh, without the education, I wouldn't be who I am today. I work for a member of parliament. I'm the office manager now. I, I kind of manage um, everything, um, you, you name it, <laughs> I do it. So um, really education is very, very important. And um, Mr. Gavin mentioned the booklet here. Um, so this book, book is now going to be published um, and is going to be distributed throughout every school um, within um, Scotland probably. Um, so really the booklet, it integrates um, many families, refugees, or people who come from different backgrounds, different communities, um, making sure that they're integrated into Scotland and they're welcome. Um, because many of us, we speak different languages. We don't speak Glaswegian uh, or English, so we don't know the language initially, and we have to learn the language. So this booklet is kind of a welcoming for us when we come to this country. And of course, when you come to this country, it's very, very hard. Imagine if you come to, if you go to a different country yourself, and you have to learn a new language. It's very, very difficult. Um, so that's how other people experience when they come over here. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope that this booklet will be really um, a beneficial for many people. Um, I don't know what else I could talk about. Um, I love questions, and if you have questions at the end, I'm more than happy to answer your questions about our campaign or about anything that you want to raise, okay? Um, I think for me, thinking back to the campaign, I feel as if like, we didn't really know what we were doing at the time. So we were just like like you guys, just pupils here at Drum Chapel High School. But we spotted an injustice, we spotted something that we just felt wasn't quite right. And at the time we kind of thought, well, what can we do about it? We're just seven wee girls from Drum Chapel and from Somalia and Poland and Iraq and um, <laughs> did I cover everyone there? <laughs> Tall yeah, yeah. um, but I think the campaign shows that you've probably got more power than you think and that everyone can make a stand and stand up for what they believe in and you don't know where it's going to lead. You know, it's it's pretty it's such a privilege to be back here at Jump Chapel High. You're so welcome and so thank you for behaving yourselves and listening to us as well. Um, I'll tell you what I'm up to now. So um, the campaign gave me a real interest in the media and the power of the media because obviously we spent a lot of time in front of TV cameras and doing interviews with journalists. So I am now um, working at BBC Scotland. So I'm a TV producer there working on a news programme. And I honestly think if I didn't take part in a Glasgow Girls campaign, I don't even know if that's what I'd be doing. Um, so it's been a real... I'm so glad I came to this school. <laughs> it's been a real... Um, a real confidence builder, you know, doing something else that you care about I think is really important instead of just going about your life, going to school, playing games, you know, like it's, I think it's important to work out who you are at this age and find something you're passionate about and harness that, is what I would say. Anyway, I know you guys have got questions for us, you've been watching, some of you have watched the, the film, haven't you? Who's, who's watched the film? Yeah, was, was any of you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. What did you think? Was it rubbish? Was it all right? <laughs> it's good, yeah. Was you it funny it? to see your little school in the film? <laughs> yeah. That must be weird. So, what was your favourite part in the, in the film? <laughs> when we saved uh, uh, Agnesa. Agnesa. Yeah. And we were partying. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, the real party was even more. The, there's a whole lot of stories that you would know because the, right, the film's just one part of it, but were you talking about the party in the film once they've saved everyone? No. No? Yeah. Well, there's what? There's a video on YouTube of the actual... Of the actual party? Yeah. 
Well, you've seen that, right? But we'll see even in the video, the actual video of the actual party, <coughs> the problem was they were, all the girls were so excited of the actual party when Agnesa came home, they went into the lift, right? And the lift got stuck. And they were all stuck in the lift for, what, about 45 minutes, something yeah. like that, until the uh, fire brigade came <laughs> and got them out, right? So these are these stories that you don't even, you don't even know about, that, but that just happened behind the scenes. Anyway, we want you to ask us some more questions. Uh, right, we'll take you first, and then we'll take you, and then we'll take you, right, you first. I can answer that. Uh, it's very hard um, because you're going to face a lot of barriers um, that other people won't face. Um, then you have to really break those barriers, making sure that you belong here and you integrate with other people. Um, I tried through my journey to break some of those barriers for other people. So hopefully other people want refugees when they come over here, they, they don't face those barriers again. Um, so I hope it's easier for new arrivals, like new scouts. Um, but do you think people have certain assumptions about refugees? Like if you're doing some of them the first time, mm -hmm. have they maybe heard bad things about refugees? Yeah, I mean, there is a bad image about refugees. Many people think that why these people come over here, um, they don't really understand the full story, why you become a refugee. Um, and I think that it's a bad understanding, or I don't really know where that comes from. Um, but. We're just people at the end of the day, and we had to leave our home country and homeland um, to seek safety. So, um, so I hope future generations will understand who are refugees and what for what reason they become refugees. Does that answer your question? Okay. Maybe next. Um, Maybe. Do first. Um, how did it feel? How did it feel when the Rosa got evicted from her house? Um, Agnesa got evicted from her house. Angry at the time? When she was downrated? She's downrated, yeah. I was very angry. Yeah, when she was like, um, I, don't know, I don't know if you got evicted from her house, but it was a question for you. And you know that I didn't know. Oh, you mean like eviction of asylum seekers from their accommodation now, at this time? Um, I think she means it. No, I think she means it. Yeah. 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 And um, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how did you feel when she did get evicted? Did you think she would come back again? So what happened with Agnesa was, she was here with her family um, as an asylum seeker, and the government decided that actually she didn't have any right to be in the country. So what they did was um, police officers and immigration officials, I think there was like 14 of them, turned up at our door on a Sunday morning, knocked down the door. Everyone was still asleep in their beds. They handcuffed her dad, handcuffed her big brother, separated the family into two different vans, and then drove her to a detention centre. So a detention centre is like a it's like a prison, basically. It's got barbed wire um, around it. So when we found out that Agnes had been treated in that way, we were obviously angry. We were sad. We were worried. Um, other asylum seekers in the school were scared. They were saying, maybe this will happen to me and my family. Like, what's going to happen to me? Could I be next? Could, could people not quit down my door early in the morning? Could I be sent back to a country that I don't think is safe, that I could be harmed in? So we were worried for Agnesa, we were upset and we were we were angry. Um, and that's what launched our campaign. We just thought, how can people be treated like that? She'd been here for five years, you know, her, her wee brother spoke with a Scottish accent. He didn't, you know, remember Kosovo or, or anything about it. And luckily, 
luckily, it turned out that the government had made a mistake and she did have the right to stay here. So Agnesa is back with us and she um, joined the Glasgow Widows campaign and then we went around trying to raise awareness, just trying to say, is this okay for children to be put in prisons? Is that, do we feel okay with that? Just trying to, to raise awareness. So that's, that's how I, how I feel. And, and because of our campaign, we also ended child detention in the UK. So the Glasgow Girls campaign made a change, that's made a, a big, difference. That's a big claim. Like I don't think we can take full credit. <laughs> but, but I think that we, we played a part in that. We definitely raised awareness and I know the Scottish Refugee Council said we played a Unfortunately, the, the, the Home Office still tries to do quite bad things. <coughs> like you've heard of the, uh, the Windrush scandal maybe, about people that had come over from Jamaica in the 1960s and uh, at the time the, the, and they were trying to send them back right so the home office we're, we're very concerned that the home office is not a, a good organization we really want to try to uh, shut it down or change it right <laughs> and we're still trying to do that right we're still uh, uh, certainly I don't think we are possible. <laughs> yeah. but uh, it was just not right that uh, people your age just getting taken out of their houses and getting put into, basically getting put into a prison. And that's what I said, it, like, what we had to do was we had to go to, as well as phone, I think you saw that in the, in the films, as well as phone, but we had to go to the actual uh, prisons or detention centres and, and talk to them there to see how they were. Uh, but then one of the nasty things that the Home Office did was they moved them out of Scotland and they moved them down to England. And, we, and then it was even more difficult to get them back. But we were very lucky that we, if we hadn't made a campaign about it, then people wouldn't have been interested in it. And then the journal, it was a journalist who realized that the, uh, Agnesa and her family shouldn't be sent back. Right? So if we hadn't kicked up about it, then we would have been sent away. Right? And that happened, unfortunately, to another family that were here. And they were sent back, and we didn't see them again. Right, so it, it was it was tough going, uh, and I, I think as well, you know, like people, the girls were older than you. They were in what, third and fourth year. Third year. Yeah, and uh, but it was tough in them emotionally to see all this happen. But they survived it. Which, what was your question? What one played the most in the movie? <laughs> a number of people played me in the film you mean? Oh yeah, in the film. Uh, look up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, was, it the, was it the one that got told that she can stay? Yeah. I think you're thinking about Am Amal. Something else. Oh, you're yeah. thinking of Amal. She was told that she could, she had her papers, but she didn't want to tell. No, sorry, it was me actually. Yeah. Was that you sorry, what was your question again? What one played you in the film? Like natural film. Stevie this the funny <laughs> question. Yeah, this which one were you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean which one I was it was me? Which actor? Hold on. Here, we're, we're, gonna Hold on. Gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get a picture. We're gonna get it. <laughs> we're gonna get it. But who am I looking for? Rosa. <laughs> Rosa played by it's um, somebody called Aruhan. Yeah, she's... So is, that, is that what you're looking for, yeah? Like, show them the picture? Wait, we need to show them the picture so that you can see it. There's not a picture. Yeah. She's got her, her one doesn't have a, a picture of nine. Right. Right. We'll show... We'll, uh, oh. She, she, no, she played me. Alright, okay. Yeah. Not that same. Um, <laughs> she's working on Emma's Black coming to show you which one she was in. Emma, I'm showing you. Right, we need more questions. I'll come back to you. Amy, Any more questions from this lot? Yes. Yeah. She doesn't look like that. Oh, yeah. Right, I'm good. Good question. That's a good question. You've got questions as well. Does she still have more questions? Okay, uh, I've just been asked a question. Did the head teacher uh, agree with the campaign? Yes, we were lucky. 
we had a head teacher that did agree with the term play, and what happened was that uh, the head teacher agreed, and I agreed, and a lot of teachers in the school agreed. There's only a few teachers now in the school that were there at the time, uh, but we we did get uh, someone from the council come and tell us that we shouldn't be doing it, and we and we sort of argued with them about it, right? So both the head teacher and myself got what was called an official warning, right? But we just ignored it, right? And we just went on doing what we're doing because we thought, well, we, we have to protect, uh, we have to protect the girls and we have to do this for the school. So the head teacher at that time was called Mr. Blakey and Mr. Blakey's been very supportive of us all and uh, he uh, uh, kept just saying a few words to some people in high places to help the campaign move on. So we, he's also a Glasgow girl, like me. I'm a Glasgow girl, right? <laughs> right. And he's a Glasgow girl too, right? Now the next question was yours, which was? Um, what happened to Elvis? What happened to Elvis? Elvis, Elvis um, the true story, Elvis came back to the country, so he was removed from the United Kingdom, forcefully, but then he came back to the United Kingdom. And now he has a wife and children. Right. And I met him once when he came back. Right. Elvis was, uh, see when he was at school, uh, you know it's the name Elvis is quite an important name, isn't it? Right. And uh, when he was at school, Miss McKenna took everyone out to uh, a and it was at the Magnum Sports Centre, and it was a nice thing, right? You know, everyone was a nice, and Elvis fell, and his hand was out like that, and a, a blade went over his finger and, and cut the top part of his finger off, right? And they had to go to the hospital to get the stitch back on, right? And uh, when the, uh, the paramedics came, you know, out the ambulance, they went, who's this guy? <laughs> and we said, it's Elvis. And they said, you're joking, you know, nobody could be called Elvis except Elvis. It was going, no, his name is actually Elvis. And they were going, no, it's not, come on, tell us the truth. And he's standing there, you know, got ice in his finger. I said, could you just go and sew his finger up, please? You know, <laughs> ridiculous. But Elvis, uh, yeah, I, I saw Elvis when he came back and he was okay. Uh, now, I think Elvis was, uh, was it true that Elvis had a wee thing for Agnesa? Yes, that was true. I can... Mm. Yeah, yeah. There was a wee sort of <laughs> wee romance thing there with the. Uh, I think was, we, yeah, I think they liked they each liked other. They liked each other, yeah. But nothing happened. It's cold, yeah. yeah. Fancied each other. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. They fancy. See, good work. They fancied each other. Exactly. That's exactly what. Right. We need some more questions. Yes. Did any other teachers help? Yes. Anyone else? So who would they know here? I don't think they know anyone. I don't think there's. there's I think it's me and um, Miss McKenna that would have been here. Really? Well, I mean, and I wasn't even here. To, to th I was only here for six yeah. weeks around about 2002. So, well, I think a lot, a lot of teachers helped. There was only one, um, only one teacher that refused to sign a petition. And uh, the who was that? What? Who's that? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of teachers still here that we had at school though, like Mr. Brown is yes. still here, isn't he? Aye. He's doing debates and Mrs. Robertson, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. deputy head, mm -hmm. so she was around when we were here. Yeah. And so Mr. Mr. Mm -hmm. But even, do you know what was really good? You know like when we put the petitions around, the first set of petitions, the dinner ladies signed it, the janitors signed it, the office staff signed it. Right, everybody signed it, right? all the kids signed it, everybody as much as possible signed the very first amount of petitions that we put in and that was really important and as I say most of the teachers apart from one all signed a petition as well so we got that, all that moving very very quickly so there was a lot of support here in the school for it but it put a lot of pressure on the school as well you know because you saw it I mean you saw it in the film because the, the film was used again for a bit if you actually saw the wee videos that we made, the the the, the school documentaries. yeah the wee documentaries the, the school features in them as well, mm -hmm. so and we were on the TV a lot at that time because people wanted to interview the girls, 
Right, because it was a new thing, you were going, what, girls upset about, you know, what, and, uh, the, the, you know, they had that, this thought in their head, the media, you know, how narrow-minded the media can be, and uh, the, the thought in their head that girls are only interested in boys and makeup and stuff, what are they doing being interested in this? So suddenly it became very important to find out what these girls were angry about, and that made it interesting at the time. The community was really supportive, I have to say. So the school and also the, the church, the local church, um, the oh, yeah. community in here, were, they're very, very helpful. Um, do you want to talk about yeah. do you, Does John Purpose still the... John Chat one. Ah, he still comes up there. Right? Yeah. He's, he's, he's got a guy with long pink hair. Pink hair, yeah. yeah. So, like does family. some jokes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> he still comes up for that. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, he helped us an awful lot. Yeah, he did. He, good, good in fact, he married, he uh, did the marriage ceremony for yeah. Emma when she got married. <laughs> yeah, he married me. John Purpose. He's very supportive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we needed as much help as we could get. Yeah, is that another question? Yeah. She, she in the film. Was it, she, like, the, one of the police officers came up to you, was it actually your, your student that you teach? Aye. Well, there, there was uh, two stories that were combined there. Uh, but yes, at one point, uh, down at Kings Way Court, I met a, a policeman that I had taught, and I talked to him about it, right? But that the, the other story was that I met a, a policeman that was just about to knock down some, well, there were uh, home office officials about to knock down someone's door and they had a policeman with them and I kept telling them not to knock the door down and that policeman was the one that was really talking to me, right? And I had a standoff with that policeman. So they, come, they see when they made the film, they put those sort of two stories together and just made it one story. Make it more entertaining. Right? <laughs> but sometimes in the, see the film you saw, sometimes we had to say, no, 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 it didn't happen that way. You have to change that, mm -hmm. you know? And there were some bits in the film that were sort of like imagined. They weren't, it didn't actually happen. But most of it happened, didn't it? Yeah, but, I think so. but not quite the way it did. I mean, I don't think Jennifer did go in to see a choir like she does in the, in the film. <laughs> she, yeah, she no. doesn't say anything. I'll come to you in a minute. Uh, question here. Any questions? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. What do you think are the biggest changed to mirrors um, so a lot of people were facing um, eviction from their own home and becoming homeless so that was the biggest challenge so if someone doesn't have a home you're on the street destitute without money without a house it's really difficult so that is what a lot of um, asylum seekers are facing nowadays and that's here in, in the UK right but then when you look abroad then it's even worse, or it's just as bad because the people are still fleeing the problems in Syria, the war in Syria, and that impacts on other countries, and people are trying to find a route to a safe place, but nowhere safe for them at the moment. So that makes it very difficult for asylum seekers and refugees, unless you put in a, a lot of resources to help them. Right, and that's still why uh, poor people are trying desperately to come to come to countries that are safe. You saw how terrible it was. Remember the re recently the big lorry that had the North v the Vietnamese people in it, and they all died. Could you imagine thinking, "Oh, I'm going to a good country and I'll be safe there, but I need to go into this refrigerated lorry for three days," they and they died because they they died because it was. They starved and it was also very, very cold. So eventually they used up all the air in the in the place and just died. You know, so it's a terrible thing that can happen. I mean, I don't want to get to Rosa's story to be upsetting, but Rosa had a terrible journey 
on a boat with her family to get here. A really, really tough journey. I remember her telling me about it. Not trying to upset you, but it's it was hard, right? And these things, when people tell you the real story of what happened to them, you you realise, oh my goodness, that's never happened to me, right? So it's like something. If you can imagine something really bad. It's like hundred times worse. The thing is, a train because uh, you're very young. Because I came here very young, but I think about my journey like like a train. It never happened. But a dream. A dream. A dream. Uh -huh. About like it never happened, but it did happen, and I went through that. Um, like the survival instinct, being in the boat, how terrifying it was. Um, my sister was with me. My sister was only one years old. Um, and. You know, it's just thinking about it, it gives you nightmares, you know. Um, but it, it, it's a really difficult journey for many asylum seekers and refugees. So I remember in this very library, um, we did a display, I don't know if you remember this, but um, everyone, lots of refugees in the school, wrote down their story of how they got here and displayed it on the wall just over here. So mm -hmm. everyone had their stories up here. And there was one that I'll never forget, and it was Abdullah's story. Oh. But um, yes. he's from Afghanistan, and he's from like a kind of well-off family. Like his dad was involved in politics, and they had a nice house. And then um, they couldn't stay there anymore; it wasn't safe. So they paid thousands and thousands of pounds to people smugglers to get them here. And it was, it was horrendous. It took them weeks to get to the UK and part of their journey was on a boat too. And um, everyone was kind of cramped, stuck together. And one of the people smugglers had a gun. So everyone was really scared. But there was a baby that kept crying. And the, the smugglers were worried because they just thought, we're going to get caught. Like, we're going to get caught here. So you better shut that baby up. Shut that baby up. And the baby wouldn't stop crying. So the smuggler just took the baby and threw the baby into the water. And, you know, so so Abdullah witnessed this. Like, watch this, this baby in, in the water. And you just think, everyone talks about the trauma that people come from. But actually, that's just the journey getting to the UK. It's just absolutely horrendous. So that's... People don't really share their stories because it is so upsetting to talk about. But when you meet like an asylum seeker or a refugee, you really don't know what they've been through. And then they come here and they hear people say, Oh, you're just here to take our jobs, you're just you're just here to take our houses. And you know, I don't think they go through all that for nothing. It's one of the things that struck me. I was a student teacher here in two thousand and two and then I was given the personal essays from the fourth year mark, including the number, and actually I think Abdullah's might have been one of them. Because yeah. um, I do remember, I, it was staggering, the stories that people were telling just about the journey, not and, and little bits about what they were leaving behind. It's an incredible stuff. How long do you think, Rosa, it took you to adjust after something, something like that? I don't know how long it would take me to get over something like that, but... I still like... Like, see when I saw people, like, the Syrian refugees? Yeah. It brought a lot of, like, um, like, it was very traumatic for sure. me because it brought um, my journey back to me, uh, like a trauma, kind mm -hmm. of, because you see people on the boat, and that's how I came over here. The boat were um, not safe to be on, yeah. and you could sink at any moment. And we didn't even have, you know, a, different organization now goes to the med uh, the Mediterranean and kind of helping people sure, sure. Are coming across but at the time there wasn't any help like that yeah. and we were just left for faith really to save us um, and I think like I, I don't know it's I think I've kind of now moved on because I've been here for so long. I've, I've been here for more than 20 years now. Um, but it's still like, you know, touch and go of because course. I'm very close with asylum seekers uh -huh. today and refugees. Um, like, I can't, it's something that I can't, like, just leave. Mm -hmm. And I still support people. So it's, 
I do understand their experiences and I think that is something that I can help them with sometimes. Like, I know what you've gone through. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're safe now um, and we can help you. Um, and so, it's being valuable for people to have somebody they can talk to who they know has been through something similar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, I think it is. And they feel safe and um, it's very welcoming for them. And like, no, I made it. You can make it as well. Um, so that's kind of being supportive of people when they're coming here, new arrivals. Two more questions. You first, then you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, those are the Glasgow boys. Okay. Those are the Glasgow boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> my media voice. <laughs> yes, they are. They are Glasgow children. boys, right enough. They are Glasgow boys, aren't they? Of course they are. Right, your final question. <laughs> Some of them are very proud. I'm very proud of. Yeah, yeah. We're all very proud of. It's, it, I think we have had to stick together because of what Rosa was saying, though, as well. Uh, it had a big effect on all of our lives. And uh, we, we, it still has an effect on our lives. Uh, so uh, that's my thing. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm still a Glasgow girl. I still, ca I still campaign. Sometimes I don't feel like Glasgow girls is like ended. The story still continues, like we're all doing different things, I think. It's affected us, yeah. I think. I think like although it was a long time ago, what was it, 15 years ago yeah. really, when it all kicked off, years. it doesn't feel that long ago because for years after that we've still been either campaigning or speaking about it at schools like we're doing now, or we've had the stage musical, we've had the BBC drama, so the story has continued and hopefully will continue to inspire people like you to go out and do what, what you want to do. What are you passionate about? It doesn't have to be about refugees, right, or asylum seekers, right? It could be something that you're passionate about and you feel like it's unjust, it's, it's happening, and you could change it because we were only 15 years old when we campaigned and we believe we can make a difference. And I think that's what it's wonderful about the Glasgow Girls story is that you can make a difference for whatever it is that you're passionate about and you think you can make a difference to it. So you can do it and uh, you're young and you have a, your whole life in front of you. So do something good with it. Okay, yep. Um, is the action for a baby or a bubble? Yeah. Yeah, this one first. Do you know the babies, like their, like their skeleton, like their body? Do you think that's still in the water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we all fight about that. We all fight about it. Everyone fights about it. We all did. Um, so Rosa and Amal were doing a TV documentary at the time it all happened. Um, yeah, I think last year. Yeah, like it was. It was really funny. I think I remember it. Um, I'm not taking for credit for it, but I, I remember it very vaguely. But we went to BBC. Um, you know the BBC place where they make the documentaries, and we were speaking to Lindsay Hill. So Lindsay Hill just like you know. She was the documentary maker. She, yeah, she helped us. Yeah, she, she edits all the film and everything about the Glasgow girls. So she was like, oh, there was a, you know, Glasgow boys and there was a Glasgow girls. And she was like, why don't we just name it that? I was like, oh, that's a good title. And we came up with like, so we just used it. Just used it. So, so I would so, say that. I would say Lindsay came up with it. Ah, because right. it used to be like the Glasgow boys. Um, was that? Like those two over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then. Yeah. And then they were like, well, we should name it the Glasgow Girls. Uh, so that's how the kind of the name came up with, and we we agreed to that, and we said that's. It was really a good title for you know for in the papers or. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you can, people can in you, rather than, oh, the seven girls from Jum Shabu High, it was just the Glasgow girls. Yeah. And also, like, the Herald was the first newspaper to publish our story. Um, so we really, like, thank them. Is that correct, um, if I say this? Yes. The Herald, okay. So the Herald newspaper um, was the first newspaper, like, published our story, and then the other newspapers ran our story as well. So um, without the Herald, the Glasgow Girls would, would be a story as well, I would say. <laughs> Why did the media students have got any questions before you? Oh, have the media students, media students you got any questions? I did spring this upon them, so they're, they're not really no, that's exactly that's there. Uh, right, okay. Uh, oh, there's some more questions. I think we'll go for last questions. Last questions then, one and two, and then uh, if you want to take okay. selfies, is that right? Yeah, okay. You want to get selfies? You can get that. Oh, I'm yeah. acting like a business manager, but they're, and they're free! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Right, last, second last question. probably a wee bit dramatised. <laughs> but I think they put that in because I would often have debates with people, you know, like I don't think, do you know that way everyone knows someone that's a wee bit racist? <laughs> like maybe like a family member or a friend of a friend. I'm not racist but, but <laughs> like, I don't think it's right to just sit back and let people say mm -hmm. what they want to say. I like to just maybe say my own point of view. And maybe the reason they put that in is I used to work in, you know, the Claybank Co-op. I used to work there and um, I used to like sell the newspapers. And this wee old man came in and he put the newspaper on the, the desk and it, the headline was um, Asylum Seekers Get Three Big Macs. So I don't know what that suggests to you, but to him it suggested that asylum seekers could walk into McDonald's and just say, mm -hmm. hi, I'm here for my free Big Mac. So he put the, the paper down, started swearing, and says, look at these parasites, they're coming here, they're going into McDonald's and they're getting Big Macs and this is a joke. So I thought, I'm not going to just sit here and listen to this. So I just said, you know, look, the, have you actually have you read the article? Um, I think it was basically in a detention centre had gone on fire and they hadn't eaten for six hours and so the staff had bought them a McDonald's. So it was a totally fake headline. And once I explained it to him, he was like, oh, oh, right enough, and right enough. And so I think people, I hate it when people assume that I'm also going to be racist. <laughs> like, you know, if you get in a taxi <laughs> yes. and the taxi driver just kind of says, oh, why would you think of these, these immigrants? And I can say, well, actually, I've got lots of friends and this is what I think about things. I think it's okay to do that. And sometimes people are taken aback that you have the confidence to actually say okay, what you believe. But I think that you should. So maybe that's why we put that, put that in there. It's a very good question, that wasn't it? Yeah, right, last question. How does it feel coming back to the scale just as being talking about the technology for some reason? That's a great question, because we were talking about that just when we came in. Um, I don't know, it's uh, different. Like, it's nice to be back here, really, because I was, as I said, I was like your age when I was here. I used to come here and read books over there, take books and read and it's, it's just wonderful to be back to Drum Chapel High School because this is my school and will always be my school. Um, it's a great school. I love Drum Chapel High School. I made really good friends here. I'm still friends with Emma and my teacher as well. So it's something that you will carry with you for the rest of your life. You, you, you're a drum chapel boy, you're a drum chapel girl. So, <laughs> so um, you know, you're from this school. So it's, it's really wonderful to be back here and seeing young people are so being educated and uh, learning here. So it's just wonderful for me. Yeah, no, I would agree. It's, it's, it's strange like, when we're talking about these stories. It's lovely to be back. It feels like we're like a wee celebrity or something. Like the photos up there and I'm like, oh my goodness. But it's also, it's sometimes it's kind of hard talking about it as well because 
it was a really emotional time for us, you know, when we were campaigning and we thought we were going to lose our friends and our friends might be sent back to unsafe countries. So it's funny because it kind of brings it all back when, when you're talking about it, but it's an important story to share. So we'd love to share it with you guys, so that's why we come here to talk to you guys. So thanks for having us yeah, as well. Thank you so yeah, I think you've been a great audience so and thank you very much. Selfies? Selfies.